Yo, top of the top, man. Good morning. As y'all can see, I'm still trying to get up myself, but we back with another video. Got to keep this going. Try to be consistent on this YouTube. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, man. Um, what I want to get into, man, is it's tough, man. It's tough. So the topic I want to talk about today is something that I know a lot of people can relate with me on that's in this youth basketball world. Um, in particular, AAU, especially if you're on the independent side of AAU, meaning that you're not sponsored by one of these shoe companies or, you know, you're, you don't have a, a NBA player back in, back in your brand. You're just out here doing it independently yourself, the staff, and everything that you do is, is off the curb, basically, right? And I, I, respect, I respect everybody that's independent, no matter what it is. You know, like the type of music I listen to. I listen to a lot of underground independent artists because I I feel like, you know, I, I want to help those guys because I know the grind, me being a, a business owner and an entrepreneur myself, I understand the struggle of being your own marketing team and, and hiring your own staff and, you know, uh, booking hotels yourself. You don't have other people doing that. I mean, you could pro some people probably do, but I'm just saying everything is like every move that you make is calculated. You know what I'm saying? So I respect everybody that's, you know, doing it, you know, independently. So with that being said, you know, the toughest thing with being an independent AAU brand is trying to build and develop on your own. Um, I think that's the toughest, that's the toughest thing, you know, with, with independence is, you know, say, for example, you might have a, a particular group. It could be middle school. It could be high school. It could be elementary school, all ages, right? You got this group that you put time in and you, you train them, you develop them, you coach them, you, 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 do your, you do your job, basically, of developing them on and off the court. And it works. They get better every year. And then next thing you know, they get so good to the point where now you have the bigger organizations trying to come after those kids and I don't always look at that as a bad thing. Um, I, I think it's a good thing because it just it shows that, you know, what we do works. Um, the training works. If there was ever doubt that I didn't know what I was doing, I can refer to that. And so when bigger organizations come after your players, you should never feel disrespected or be that upset over it. However... It's frustrating being on the independent side because it happens over and over and over again. I'm going to use my program as an example. I've had, I've had every year we've had talent. Okay, I'm going to just put that out there. I don't want to throw shade towards my former players or guys that's put on Rampage uniforms. So every year we've had talent um, through various ages, right? We started in 2015. That was our first year. In particular, there were three different, I'm going to say four. There were four different groups within the past six to seven years that were good enough to compete with shoe deal level teams. Four different groups, okay? Three out of the four groups I've had collectively. Well, I'm going to say two. Well, no, I can say three. Three out of the group, three out of the four groups I've had that have been good enough to compete with shoe deals, I've lost players, multiple players, uh, to the shoe deals. Um, and this is even I, I've I've even had teams where we would play a shoe deal and literally beat them. This is on the middle school level. We'll we'll beat a shoe deal level team, and the next week the players are gone. So it's like, I'm not chasing a shoe deal contract, but it is frustrating to know that had these individuals stayed, we probably could have been sponsored because I'm looking at the teams that they've, they've gone to and those teams were sponsored and those were like the best players on those teams. So when you, so I think that's the frustrating part of knowing what we could have had. Um, but one group in particular, stayed okay uh we lost we did lose one player out of the group 
We lost one to a shoe deal out of that group, but that was only it. That was the only player we lost. We only lost one. <clears throat> Others, we lost two, three, four, almost. I mean, we. I had a team in middle school a couple years ago, man. We lost the entire starting five. Like, <laughs> so, you know, when, when people ask me about my program, you know, we have two guys that have touched Division One ball, and they ask me, you know, why you guys don't have more Division One players? And the honest answer is we haven't been able to keep them. We've had them, but – the shoe, the shoe companies or the NBA player driven teams, they come in and they take them. So we can't, you know, and I'm not going to say, oh, I mean, they, yeah, they, they, they played for us. They did play for us, but we didn't get them to the D1. The shoe deal got them there because when they were with us, they were 14, 15 years old, right? But the group that stayed, we lost one kid to West Coast Elite, Lake Show and West Coast Elite, one kid, but everybody else stayed. And five, players the five players that stayed well actually it's more than five but five of those players one is at a d1 shout out myron another's at a d2 cal state stanislaus shout out jeremiah another's at a d3 um he's a high academic kid shout out to ryan from uh, uc davis he's at occidental college down in socal and the other two are at NAIs, respectable NAIs. So one is at Menlo, shout out Landon, and the other one is at Cal Maritime. He's about to start his first year there, shout out Lucky. Those five stayed, and I had uh, three more guys, three other guys. Two are at JUCOs, uh, College of Marin. They're probably going to, uh, Daniel's probably going to be a starter, shout out Daniel Fagan. And Jacob Ebert, he's probably going to see, he might start. If not, he's going to see some time at Solano. So I just named seven guys that are playing college ball. We lost one to a shoe deal. So that's eight players. I'm going through my whole team off the top of the head. <clears throat> Another one, two other ones, the other two players, the other two players are at preps. So they did post-grad. They're doing post-grad right now. Shout out Christian. Shout out Hassan. And then we have one more kid who was on that team. Uh, his name was, was Esai, and he – was a great student, so he, he definitely could have played college ball, but, you know, he decided to focus on his education, which is nothing wrong with that. Shout out Eastside, man, from St. Pat's. But I just went through the entire roster, bro. I just went through my entire roster. They all stayed, and they're placed, and, they're, and, and these guys that are at JUCOs, I think, can possibly be D2, D1 players. Um, but not to get carried away with that group, but it's like I've had four groups. The group that stayed, they all got placed. And it's like, it's very frustrating trying to build this from the ground up and having a group that I believe can be good, or if not better than the group that I just named, and distractions getting get in the way. Kids, I, kids go here, kids go there. And I get it. Being a kid, having a shoe deal coming after you, having an NBA player coming after you, it's hard to turn down. I get it. I get it. But it's also a part of me, I'm also like, dang, man, if... If they just stuck it out, man, the, our, our teams would have been really good and they would have got what they needed, you know, because I'm, I'm not trying to – I'm not doing this just for us to win. The kids, the individual would have got something out of it by being able to go to school possibly for free or at least be in a situation where they can set themselves up to get their school paid for. That's what JUCO's for or PrEP is for, right? So <sighs> – my message to all the independent AAU programs, man, every kid that you lost is probably not going to be your last. Don't question what you do because obviously if the bigger programs are coming to take your kids, you're doing something right. And I don't want to sound cocky, but I got to keep it real. Either you're really good as a coach train or you're either you're really good as a coach slash player development coach or trainer. Either you're really, really good at that. Or these bigger programs don't know how to scout. They got to, it, like, it's one of the two. So, and it might be both. But it got to be one. It got to be at least one of the two. Either you're a really great coach and great trainer, or these big programs don't know talent. Because if, they're, if you're a program that they're continuously plucking players away from, they got to put some damn respect your name, on your name. Excuse my language, but it is what it is. They got to put some damn respect on your name. If, they're, if you're the program that's independent, no contract, no shoe deal, no NBA player, no financial advisor, no none of that, and you're the one that's producing these players that they got to come and grab from, they got to put some respect on your name. 
Okay, so I, I salute all the independent AU programs, man. Keep grinding. We know the we know the struggle. We know the fight that we're up against. Keep going, bro. Even if they even if you lose a player to the best team in the country, keep going, bro. Because you know what, your game will respect. Keep coming back and and developing a lot. Every player I lose, I come back and develop five more. That's my mentality, and it's not a cocky mentality. It's just a a, a strong mindset mentality because I've seen a lot of independent programs fold and quit and say they don't want to do this because they're frustrated over losing players. My mindset is, hey, I can lose that one, but I guarantee I come back and develop five more. And and, and eventually they're going to start staying or majority of them is, are going to start staying. So don't get frustrated when a kid leave a program, man. Just keep developing, doing, your, doing what you do. It's a beautiful day in the Bay Area, man. Hey, y'all have a good one. We out.